Good evening, and welcome to the Christian Truckers Network. This is a ministry that welcomes guest speakers to share their testimonies as well as the Word of God as the Holy Spirit leads. If you would like to be a participant, you can call in at 641-715-0689. Then they'll ask for an access code, and that is 863-397, and then the pound sign. Again, that number is 641-715-0689, and the access code is 863 863- 397 and then the pound sign. Muted. Let him stand behind his pulpit. I do not take this lightly. This is an honor. So let's give Pastor uh, Turner here a big round of applause. Let him know how much we love him. Hallelujah. Like I said, I love this house. So much goes on in here. There is a magnetism and there is an aura in this house. And I'm telling you that somebody can be healed by the power of God tonight. Right? Oh. Because blind. Who scribbled that on there? Because bound, sick, tormented, lame. The Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. Amen. Pastor asked me a couple weeks ago if I would speak. And um, the Lord had impressed on my heart a message. I had not put anything with it. It was just a thought. But as I thought about it, it, it God just laid it on me. And um, if you would better put that title up there. And I started thinking about the, just as we need natural food for our bodies, we also need food for our spirit man. We know that there's foods out there that's good for our bodies, and there's foods that's bad. Also, there are foods out there the world will offer that will hurt our spirit man. I've titled this message, Feasting on Crumbs. If you would, go with me, Matthew 15, verse 32. If you would, just stand for the reading of the word right quick. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude. Because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus say unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven and a few fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and broke them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were all filled. If you're Pentecostal, you're going to say. Eat that was left seven back at full. And they that eat were 4,000 men besides the women and the children. Father, I ask you bless it upon this word tonight. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit do all the speaking and the teaching, Lord God, that this microphone just amplify his voice. Father, we give you thanks for what you're about to do and all that you have done. And in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now back in Matthew 15, 32. If you can get back up there, Bob. There it is. We got a question here. I have compassion on the multitude because they have continued with me now three days and have nothing to eat. So when I read this, I asked the question, Lord, why did they go three days without food? You are the provider. You could feed them any time that you wanted to. Why did you let them go for so long? And James chapter 1 says, To any man that lacked wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives liberally. So I asked of the Lord. And he says, Son, go with me to to Genesis chapter 1, and I'll show you. And God saw the light, and that it was good, and divided the light from darkness. Next one. And God called the dry land earth, and gathered together the waters of the sea, and God saw that it was good. 
And the earth brought forth grass and herbs yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And God created great wells in every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Mm. Jesus didn't create anything out of thin air. He only blessed in multitude what him and the Father had already created. Why? Because it was very good. Somebody go ahead and give him a round of applause right there. Mm. You see, church, it's not until it gets into the hands of the Lord that the provisions can be multiplied. So in other words, when you run out of your provisions, you're going to run smack dab into his. Somebody say, I know that's right. <laughs> and now here's where the story thickens. Just before he feeds the multitude, a Canaanite woman needs him to cast a spirit out of her daughter. Matthew 15 and 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried at him, saying, Have mercy on me. Lord, thou son of David. That got his attention. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it to thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. In verse 23, see it first. There it is. The first he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Lo, oh, oh, how many times have we seen someone come in? Pastor, they don't look like us. Pastor, they don't dress like us. They don't speak Christianese. But I, no, Jesus said, if you had a hundred sheep and you... If one went astray, would you not leave the 99 and go after the one which was lost? I said, we can't leave them. we got to come with me right quick. No. You see, one day I was lost, and somebody came and left the 99 and came with me and prayed with me at the altar because they wasn't they wouldn't willing to let me go. They see what I'm saying? They left the 99 and saw the needs of the one. we got to go out into the world and find the needs of the one that is lost. Because I'm here to tell you, church, uh, I was that one that was lost. Uh, and someone left the 99 uh, and came to me and prayed for me and see that I was not going to be lost anymore. And, and Lord, God said, the one that comes to repentance, the heaven shouts. Amen. Somebody say it. Now let's look at Mark's account. Mark 7 and 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. This passage goes on to make it clear that Jesus was talking about the Jews. But because the Jews refused to eat from the Lord's table, he offered it to the Gentiles or the dogs. Jesus literally called the Gentiles dogs. Now, wait a minute before you throw your Bibles and get your halos and sling them up here like Frisbees. This is not the insult that we think it is. Because according to Strong's Dictionary, this word dogs means a little dog. Or more precise, a puppy. 
Jesus was referring to us as a puppy. Hallelujah. Lord of mercy. The bread was offered to the Jews first, but after the children ate, then the family pet was fed. You see, church, this woman humbled herself, confessed him as Lord, worshipped him and asked for mercy, and even repented and realizing and confessing that she wasn't worthy to sit underneath the table. But she knew that even crumbs from the Lord's table is enough to give one hope. Come on now, church. Hallelujah. You see, church, we forget that it was her faith in the Lord's crumbs that drove the demon out of her daughter. If we think we're worthy to sit at the Lord's table without accepting the Lord's sacrifice, then we're not even worthy of the crumbs. But it's not until the woman admits that she's like a dog under the table that she's permitted to sit as a child at the table. You see, church, we're too afraid to ask God for anything but crumbs. We keep forgetting that the Lord uh, sent out millions of gallons of water and tons of manna every day to the children of, uh, children of Israel. And uh, he is a God of more than enough. He is a God that will supply every need. Lord, he's not the El Chipo. He's the El Shaddai. Come on, church. Uh, lift up your eyes uh, and lift up your heels uh, and to which your help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. He is a God that will bring us victory. Let's look at David's testimony in Psalm 78 and 15. And he gave them drink out as of a great depth. And he brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. He rained down that upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like unto the sand of the sea. And they would forget how he filled Elijah in 1 Kings 17 and 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And then God sends to him a woman who don't have enough herself, <clears throat> but when faith is added to the need, crowds become the seed. <laughs> David describes the blessings of the Lord in Psalms 37 and 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You see, church, we feed off everybody's words like it means everything. Oh, you're looking good today. Oh, we just love you. We feed off those words. But those, uh-uh. We got to feed off the Word of God. The Word of God is the meat that we need today. The Lord put into His Word everything we need for our soul so that we can survive this world and get past all and get to his kingdom. Come on now. Oh. You see, just a few crumbs from the meat of the word is better than a mouthful of sweet nothings from man. You see, crumbs don't seem like much. But ground up wheat ain't nothing but crumbs. And add a little to it, and you got bread. And add a little to it, and you got biscuits. And I say add a little honey to it, Oh, and you got a feast. Come on, women. The word said in Psalm 119, 103, How sweet are thy words unto thy taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Oh, church, listen to me. Oh, just adding his word to your life will open up a bright new day. It'll cause the sky to be bluer. It'll cause the grass to be greener. It'll cause the sun to be brighter. Oh, David said in Psalms 119 and 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Mm. See, my God said you're either with me or you're against me. He said you're either with me or you're against me. He said you're either for me or you're not. There's no fence. There's no fence. God don't own the fence. If you see a fence, Satan owns it. <laughs> 
Paul tells us and warns us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. Ye cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. In other words, you can't dance with the devil and call grace the dance floor. You can't shack up with Satan and expect God to pay the rent. He says you're either with him or you're not. You're either serving the devil or you're serving the Lord. Where are you getting your crowns from? Oh, come on, somebody. Help me out here. You see, the world is feasting off HBO, Hell's Best Offer, and Satan Time. I mean Showtime. It's Cinemax. I, I said S-I-N-A-M-A-X. I can't help if they spelt it wrong. I, <laughs> oh, they're feeding off shows that promote everything that God warns us against. Fornication, idolatry, adultery. The world is feasting off the fruit of the vine instead of the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So church, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. So see, some of those shows aren't so obvious. See, those shows that leave out the mother and the father. It's a direct attack on the family. Shows like Andy Griffith, Family Affair, Bonanza, The Rifleman. I love that show. He turned out to be gay. My three sons, Flipper, Mayberry RFD, Different Strokes, Full House, Sanford and Son, and Beverly Hillbillies. And now look at the condition of the family. Church, they call it programming for a reason. They tell us who to love. They tell us who to hate. They tell us what to wear. They tell us what to go. They tell us what to do. They tell us what's good, what's bad. Folks, my Bible tells me that there's coming a day when the world will call bad good and good bad. Isaiah warns us in chapter 15, 59, verse 14, and judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. In other words, truth will be turned around backwards. My friends, we're living in that day right now. Have you noticed how our language has changed? Things no longer mean what they used to mean. Years ago, being gay meant that you were happy. Crack was a split in the sidewalk. Coke came in bottles and red and white cans. The only kind of AIDS we knew anything about were Band-Aids, Kool-Aid, and First Aid. Pot was in the bathroom. Bad was not good. Far out was on the other side of town. Heavy just meant something weighed a lot. My friends were left in a world where sentences make little sense, promises that no one wants to believe, contracts that we do not honor, pledges that we do not keep, resolutions that we push to the side and don't hold up to. A world where words like honesty and integrity and truthfulness and commitment are used as selling points for an investment firm. Woo! And don't forget the old cliche, you are what you eat. We've been digesting Hollywood's lies for so long, it don't even make us sick anymore. Pastor, you can go to some of these countries where the water will make you sick, but if you stay there long enough, you'll get used to it. Mm-hmm. It's a shame that TV doesn't bother us anymore like it used to. I'm here to tell you it still makes me sick to see the wickedness on television, and I refuse to let it infect my house, because for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to worship the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to trust the Lord. Somebody shout right there.
feasting on just one little mustard seed of faith will move mountains. It will move mountains. Mountains. The doubters came to Jesus. And they wanted a sign from heaven proving who Jesus was. They wanted Jesus to send down manna from heaven. In John 6, verse 32, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the bread from heaven. For that bread of God uh, is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they say unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I am that bread of life. Woo! So you see, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. They wanted the miracle to create their faith. We expect our faith to create the miracle. Mm. Solomon warns us against worldly food in Proverbs 23. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. But Isaiah cries from us from chapter 55 and tells us the living bread, the living water. He gives us this words, Ho, everyone that thirsty, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye and buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk with, with money without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and which labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in fatness. <laughs> so church, what are we hungry for? What are we thirsty for? We've got to be feeding on the crumbs of the Lord. I need to show you something here. This is, this is going like this. In Matthew, go back to Matthew 15 and 36. I'll just read here then. Matthew 15 and 36. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes, and he gave thanks. Now I want you to look at this word gave, and he gave thanks. Mm. This word gave is a Greek word called Ditto me. Ditto me. And it's a prolonged form of a primary verb. In other words, it's put into action. It's an action word. But it's a primary form of a, this, this action does not stop. Once Jesus broke the bread, it just continued to give and to give and to give. He told his disciples, to gather all that they had and put in the baskets, and they took out and they fed the multitudes. But when they started running low, well, well Lord, what about this family right here? And then we went back, and there it was again. He already had it going. And he went back and he saw this family. What about this? And they got fed. And they filled the multitude until all were filled, and seven baskets were left over. That's the mighty God that we serve. That is the mighty God that we serve. And that bread keeps giving today. 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, he broke his body one time for anyone that would accept his gift of salvation. And it gives today, and it continues to give tomorrow. He is a mighty and wonderful God. Father, I, Pastor, I appreciate you letting me take this opportunity to speak to you. Father, we love you, and we appreciate you. We give you all thanks, and we give you all glory. You are mighty in all ways. Lord, thank you for the opportunity of letting me speak this word today. It was brief, but I felt your presence while I was doing it. We love you, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. We
would like to invite you to tune in to Smokehouse Studios Front Porch Show. We're live Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. Central Time. We discuss... We would like to invite you to tune in to Smokehouse Studios Front Porch Show. We're live Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. Central Time. We discuss current events and Bible prophecy and how it all relates into the days that we find ourselves in today. You can find Smokehouse Studios Front Porch Show by searching for it on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spreaker Radio. We also invite you to tune into our website at smokehousestudios.net. There you can click the radio show link, and on the radio show page, there is a player there to hear our shows as well. They do podcasts, so you can go back into the archives and listen to our past shows. Tune in Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. Central Time. 